Last time we wrote only one question. Uh, so tell me anyone, what shall the Muslims do when there is a disagreement among them? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What shall the Muslim do when there is a disagreement among them? According to Ayah 59 of Surah An-Nisa, first they should refer it to Quran and Hadith. Okay, so they will try to find the answer in Quran and Hadith. Today we will study the Hadith class from the book Sunan Abi Dawud. Read this one. A, pers a person looks at a woman whom he desires to marry. Narrated Jabir ibn Abdullah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when one of you asked a woman in marriage, if he is able to look at what will induce him to marry her, he should do so. He, Jabir, said, I asked a girl in marriage, I used to look, to look at her secretly until I looked at what induced me to marry her. I therefore married her. Okay. So here, for example, let me take the practical example. Let's suppose so let's suppose. There is a lady, her name, you can use any name, for example, Fatima. Can I look at her? Yes. Yes. No, I cannot look at any other lady. It is not allowed in Islam, okay? So in Quran, it is clearly mentioned um, whenever there is a woman, men should look down. They should not look at any lady, okay? So on normal occasion, I cannot look at any lady. So this means I cannot look at Fatima. Okay. So if anyone asks you the question, can a man look at the woman? The answer is no. Now, this same. So this means I cannot look at Fatima. Look toward Fatima. But let's suppose I have decided to send a marriage proposal to Fatima. In that situation, can I see Fatima? Yes. Yes. So we can only look at the ladies only when we have made the decision of sending the marriage proposal. So here you write the question. Okay, so here you will write the question. Can can a man look at other ladies? The answer is no. The answer is no. Now we will write the same question with slight change. Can a man look 
at the lady whom he has decided to send marriage proposal can a man look at the lady whom he has decided to send the marriage proposal in the answer you write according to the hadith 2082 of sunan of Daud, yes he can according to the hadith 2082 of sunan of Daud, yes he can Yes, he can. Miss Hoor, can a man look at other ladies? No. And can a man look at the, at the lady whom he has decided to send a marriage proposal? Yes, he can. Okay. <laughs> Reference for your answer? According to Hadith number 2082, Sanan Abidawud. Hmm. Always write the reference. And okay. What about women? Can women look at other men? No. No. Do you have any reference? Have you ever read it or you just heard it from someone? We've read it. Sorry? The prohibition is only for men in Quran. I never oh. read any prohibition for women. So to women, I mm -hmm. say that if you look at normally, there is no sin. But if you've started to feel some fitna, then you mm -hmm. better not look at anyone. On normal oh. occasion, nothing. But for men, even a mm -hmm. normal look is not allowed. Even if they don't like a woman, even if they think that a woman is not beautiful, still they cannot look at the woman. But for women, this thing is not very strict because there is no any such restriction mentioned in Quran and Hadith. So this means if mm -hmm. they don't feel any fitna, then there is nothing wrong with it. Okay? Any doubt? I just wanted to ask you why a man is not allowed, a woman is allowed. There is okay. no reason why. Okay, first thing, this prohibition is in Quran by Allah. So, normally, it is the psychology of men. If you ever read the men's psychology, let me write it for you to explain it better. According to modern day science, the nature of every normal man is short term mating. This is the normal nature of almost every man, according to science. And according to science, the normal nature of the woman, most of the women is long term mating. What does it mean? Whenever men will see any any woman, their psychology will call them to just mate with her and have children, then leave her and proceed to the next woman. Do the same thing with that woman then proceed to the next woman. This happens only when they see other women. Because this is their nature. It is by Allah in their mind, this thing is in their nature. Even if they don't know it, it still exists in their mind. So whenever they see any woman, they feel this desire. 
but for women this is not the case according to science their nature is long term mating so when they like someone it is their nature to like it for long term we can say almost whole life this is their nature so short term is against the nature of women so even if they look at any other man probably they will not get the desire in most of the situation but for men this thing is very difficult to avoid any question Miss Hoor, read this one. Narrated Aisha, Omul Mumineen, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the marriage of a woman who marries without the consent of her gradients is void. He said these words three times. If there is Cohabitation. She gets her door for the intercourse her husband has had. If there is a dispute, the Sultan men is authority is the gradient of one who has none. Guardian. Guardian. Okay, we have three uh, things mentioned here and two of them are very important, especially these days. Can a girl marry without the consent of her guardian. So according to Hadith 2083 of Sunan without no. According to the Hadith 2083 of Sunan without the answer is no. Now the next thing is very important. We see many examples for it in our daily life. But before that, does any of you know what is the Islamic way of getting married? Like if anyone wants, to, any girl wants to get married, what shall she do? Um, Manhur, any idea? Yes or no? Because if thou, if someone wants to marry you, they come to your parent and no, ask for hand of marriage to you. No, let me take some practical example. Let's make mm -hmm. a practical example, okay? We will make up ourselves. Are you married? Yes. Okay, we need a single. I think Hoor is single, so we'll take her example. Let's suppose... Who wants to get married? Okay. So what is the Islamic way of for her to proceed to get married? What shall she do now? Just say anything. Don't worry about mistake, Ms. Ummi Ahmed. Yeah, me, uh, my, uh, when, when that, uh, when my, when I had uh, someone wanted to marry me, my mom asked me and my dad, there's someone who wants to marry you. Do you okay. want to go ahead with it? Okay, good. But in this situation, she there is no there is no man that wants to marry her. Nobody has sent the marriage proposal. So she has reached the age and she wants to get married. What shall she do now? No idea. 
So in this case, in this situation, she should consult her parents. Anything which is halal, no need to shy from parents. Just tell them that you want to get married. Then it is the duty of her parents to suggest her some suitable persons. And if she knows some suitable person, she can suggest to the parents as well. Then together they will discuss the suitable options. Together, her and her parents will discuss the suitable option. When they finalize a man, let's suppose they finalize Mr. Ali. They think that her and parents think that this Ali is suitable for them. After making the final decision, they can send the proposal to Mr. Ali. And if Mr. Ali accepts the proposal, then they will get married. And if he rejects the proposal, he say, I, I am not ready for marriage or I don't think this is appropriate for me, then they can again make discussion and send the marriage proposal to somebody else. If he accepts, get married. If he rejects, then send marriage proposal to someone else. This is the way of getting married. Now, Ms. Ummi Ahmad, I will ask you this question again. So, situation is this. They don't have received any marriage proposal. So, what shall who do now if she wants to get married? Who should tell the, his, her parents that she uh, wants to get married? Uh, she wants married, okay? Just she and, wants, yeah. Then what and then they, they will discuss for suitable option. Mm -hmm. Who and now, parents together, these three persons yeah, discuss. Together, yeah. yeah. Three persons. And then now they just see, they see like a, a, a man is, is like Ali. They just say the suitable for who is Ali. Mm -hmm. Then so they, they just what? make final decision to send a proposal to Ali. Mm -hmm. So parents of who will send the proposal to Ali. Okay. Or maybe they yeah. speak with the parents of Ali. And in this way they continue. And if he if Ali rejects, what will they do? They will look for another option yes. for who. Yeah. So in this case, they are themselves sending the proposal. Okay. Now let's oh, yeah. another situation which is mentioned in this and this. Now the situation is this that who thinks that Mr. Ahmad is suitable for her. And parents think no, Ahmad is not suitable for her. He will not be good for her. But uh, Mr. Ali will be suitable for her. What shall we do in this situation? Who thinks Ahmad is suitable and parents think Ali is suitable? In this situation, who will be, um, has to pray uh, Salatul Istikhara. Okay, then what will happen? Then they say Salatul Istikhara, it will take towards maybe to Ahmed or Ali. No, in Salatul Istikhara, we just make a dua to Allah to do mm -hmm. what is better for us. And Allah may, will make that thing easy for us, but we don't know what is better for us. Who does not know Ahmad is good or Ali is good for her? She thinks Ahmad will be good. So decision they have to make. So what decision shall they make now? The parents have to... um to sit with Hur and discuss about Ahmed and Ali. So they sat with Hur, again disagreement. Hur is still saying, I want to marry Ahmed, but parents are still insisting to marry Ali. Yeah, because it says um, Hur is the one who is going to get married. So I think the parents have to agree with Hur. Okay, so let's suppose Hur has said that I will marry only Ahmad. I will not marry anyone else. Okay, who has made this decision? But the parents have said, we will not participate in your marriage if you marry Ahmad. 
we will leave you permanently or we will not participate in your marriage if you marry Ahmed. So they are uh, emotionally blackmailing her. What shall be done now? We have Would seen see? many examples of this. Have you ever seen any such example in your daily life? Yeah. Yeah. So what shall but they do? said is you cannot get married until you have consent from your guardian. But no. I can see people just get married without the consent. No. So I don't know. Who is saying I will marry Ahmad only and parents are saying we will not participate in your marriage. I will not become your guardian. So according to this hadith, <clears throat> if there is a dispute, then the sultan is the guardian of one who has none. In this situation, Islamically, oh, who can, um, can get contact the eh? court? Who will contact the court? And she will tell the court that I want to marry Ahmed but my parents are not allowing me to Mr. Uh, Ahmed. So court will summon the parents again and again they will discuss in the court if they agree, good. If they don't agree, then the court will be the guardian of court. Okay. So court will arrange the nikah with Mr. Ahmed and there is nothing wrong in it. Islamically. Oh, okay. People will definitely say bad thing to Miss Hood, but mm -hmm. Islamically, there is nothing wrong in it. And what about now your parent won't talk to you? Is it okay also? He will continue to do good with them. And if mm -hmm. they leave her, then they are mm -hmm. doing something wrong. She is not doing okay. anything wrong. She is doing only what Islam is allowing her to do. Ah, okay. Okay. I have seen one example in which a young girl was studying in another city far from her home. She was studying in university in a co-education. So there was a lot of fitna there and she was uh, finding it quite difficult to avoid adultery. So she uh, told her parents to arrange a nikah for her, but parents did not. Rather, parents said to her, complete your education, which will take around three or four years. After that, we will arrange your marriage. So even did, uh, then she asked them for nikah only, that only nikah, which is an Islamic engagement, and I will complete the education and then I will get married. But still, parents even don't allow her to do a simple nikah. So in that situation, a woman is allowed to contact the court for her rights. So, what can a girl do if there is a disagreement with her parents? According to the hadith, which hadith? According to the hadith 2083, she can contact the Sultan, basically, means anyone who has the authority of government. It can be judge. These days, it is judge, or it can be the ruler, it can be mayor. It can be the leader of the Muslims. So the one who has legal authority in the city. So I will write the judge here. In my city, it is judge. So she can contact the court. According to the Hadith 2083, she can contact the court.
Miss Hood, repeat the question and the answer. What can a girl do if there is a disagreement with her parent? She can contact with court. She can contact the court. And court will definitely arrange everything for her. Now, the practical mistake that girls do these days and many boys do as well. So, girl contact the court secretly without informing the parents. And they get married in the court with someone, but parents are unaware of it. So, secret marriage is not allowed. They can contact the court, but they need to make this marriage public. If the girl make it a secret from her parents, then this marriage has no importance in Islam. Okay, next student, Ms. Ummi Ahmad. Can a girl keep this court marriage secret from her parents? No, she no. can't. So she has to make it public. If she does not have courage to do it publicly, then she can't do it secretly. Read this one. Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no marriage without the permission of a guardian. Abu Dawood said, the narrator Yunus, Yunus yeah, also transmitted. Huh? But this is completed here. Next oh, it's completed. The reference. So again, same thing. A girl cannot marry without the permission of guardian. So we have studied in detail. She must discuss with parents and in case of disagreement, they will contact the court. Ms. Hoor, read the next one. If Ne al Zubair reported on the authority of Ume Habiba that she was the wife of Ibn Jash, but he did, he no. was among those who migrated to Abyssina. Inia Negus then married her to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So today we see many people do online nikah, like husband is in different country, wife is in different country and they do nikah online. So according to this hadith, and in this hadith, the Ummi Habiba was in another country. And Prophet ﷺ was in another country. Both were in different countries. And at the time of Nikah, they both were in different countries. So this means we can also do Nikah if we are in a different countries. So here you write the question. Can a man and woman do nikah if they both are in different countries or cities? Can a man and woman do a nikah if they both are in different countries or cities? So according to Hadith 2086, yes, they can. According to Hadith 2086, yes, they can. Ms. Ummi Ahmad. Maqil bin Yasser said, I had a Previous sister. Hadith. Previous question. Can they do nikah if they are in different countries? Like husband is in USA and wife is in UK. Can they do nikah? 
according to hadith 2 2086 yes they can okay now this hadith next one is also uh, related to the previous question in case of disagreement what can girls do if there is a disagreement with her parents so that this is okay read this hadith Makil bin Yasser said I had a sister and I was asked to give her in marriage. My cousin came to me and I married to him. In the, he then divorced her, one revocable divorce. He abandoned her till her waiting period passed. When I was asked to give her in marriage, he again came to me and asked her in marriage. Thereupon I said to him, No, by Allah, I will never marry her to you. Then the following verse was revealed about my case. And when and when ye have divorced women and they reach their term, place no difficulties in the way of their of their marrying their husbands. So basically this man was stopping her from marrying her cousin or her ex-husband. So he was stopping her, but according to this hadith. They, he cannot stop her. So, this thing is repeated. Let's suppose if can parents stop anyone or can brother stop anyone or girl from marrying anyone? So, according to this hadith, they cannot stop anyone. If the wants to get married, then they must arrange the marriage. We will stop here and next time, inshallah, we will continue. If you have any question, you can ask me. See you all next time, inshallah. Allah, Jazakallah khair. Wa